G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we're going to be having a look at the F11F1 and more specifically why the heck it sits at battle rating 9.0. But before we get into that I'd just like to thank everyone for basically not being salty at me taking sponsors. There were a couple of people and that is a little bit upsetting. Um, but I am actually going to be using some of the money to basically stop myself from dipping into my savings in order to fill up on petrol and uh, pay for parking to go and see my girlfriend who is currently sick. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it. I've been trying for a few years now to put aside some money to basically save for a house because I don't want to live with my parents anymore. And the moment I can basically buy myself a house, I can potentially move out, which is a really really good thing just for a little bit of independence plus it helps me to uh, potentially chuck in a stream or two if I get the time but most of all it just gives me a little bit of independence and a little bit of space and makes well, allows me to stop basically living in my parents laundry so uh, thank you guys for that I really appreciate it and without further ado this is the F11 F1 now the F11 F1 was a reward plane and it has a fairly interesting history in War Thunder it sort of started out as a bit of an interesting plane. It was okay, uh, in fact it was really strong in terms of its performance, but its handling is a little bit odd. You see, this plane does 1200 on the deck and is 9.0. No other plane for its battle rating is anywhere near as quick. The quickest you can get is probably the Swift F7 at 8.7, uh, the Hunter F1, which tops out at, at I think it's 11.14. Uh, the MiG-17 also tops out at 11.17, I think. Uh, and a couple of other planes come a little bit close. I think the Super Mist Air does, but you never see it in the Super Mist Air. Now, for this plane, 1150 is more of a reasonable number. That's sort of more the higher speeds that you will be seeing around sea level. But you can comfortably outrun things like the Shenyang F5 and anything else that is basically slower. Uh, like a Hunter F1, uh, I believe you can outrun the Hunter F6 as well at sea level, plus you've got that afterburner so you do get a bit more altitude performance. This plane also has four AIM-9Bs. No other 9.0 that I can think of off the top of my head has four AIM-9Bs. The only other planes that have them are the G91s and they are fairly slow with those particular missiles. For me, the F11 represents a plane that is kind of hard to get kills in, but at the same time, it's a plane that is extremely strong. This type of plane is the kind of plane that is a little bit harder to play and requires a little bit more experience. And so when it was introduced into War Thunder, those that got their hands on it first, namely the CCs being an event plane, tended to be a little bit more experienced at the game than the average Andy. And so the average Andy received this plane with a whopping 30,000 repair cost. And when everyone decided that they would play the plane and figured out that it wasn't as great as, uh, you know, it wasn't wasn't amazing. Uh, it certainly is a decent plane by all means, but it's certainly no overpowered monster. The average Andy in the War Thunder community ended up paying the price quite heavily. And this is because Gaijin decided at that time to do a balance patch just magically the day before it was released. And for me... This really gives us a little bit of an insight into the way Gaijin operates, and that is randomly. I'm I'm starting to be a little bit more convinced that Gaijin just just does things when they feel like it. Just like, yeah, I think it's time. Yeah, let's let, let's do it now. You mean the regular community just doesn't have any access to this vehicle, but you know, let's let's do it anyway. And so they did it, and it was terrible. This thing had a thirty thousand repair cost, and it probably should have just gone up to nine point three. I think, personally, 9.3 is a good battle rating for this thing because it would basically put it within line of something like the CL-13B. Even though it's 9.7 and it should be 9.3, uh, things like the G91YS, but I would say that the G91YS is a little bit better due to its ability to uh, dogfight a little bit more. Plus, I would argue that it has, in a way, better cannons. So, in this case here, we have basically a plane that is really well performing, and therefore has more of a frustration factor on the enemy team rather than being some sort of tough opponent. Something like the Lightning follows a very similar pattern where the plane itself is actually very tough to play because it doesn't have great energy retention, it is very wobbly and it has only two guns that are positioned awkwardly in the fuselage 
with two missiles that are not exactly the greatest. Don't get me wrong, the red tops are okay, but they're nothing particularly amazing. Now, the issue here arises when a player with reason reasonable experience gets their hands on a plane like this. And then it makes you think, well, well, if these guys can exploit it, then the average Andy can't exploit it. Where should this plane sit for balance purposes? Because I could play this plane all day and keep going with a, I think it's a three or four kill death ratio that I have in this plane. Um, it is a really, really good plane. And as long as I at least have one teammate around, and as long as I have, uh, I guess, a few enemies to take out instead of, you know, a whole horde, uh, as long as my team doesn't really, you know, disappear and do a do a Harold Holt. Uh, if you don't know who Harold Holt is, he's one of our prime ministers uh, back in the 60s that literally disappeared. He went for a swim and disappeared. So if your teammates go for a swim and disappear, well, that's called Harold Holting. Anyway, if your teammates are not complete useless, you know, blocks of, I don't know, cheese, then you've got yourself a, a bit of a winner. I have a 70% win rate in this. I don't have a 70% win rate in many other vehicles. And that's because I kind of know what I'm doing in this one. But what about the average Andy who doesn't know what they're doing? They can't really exploit it, yet they still have the performance to provide a little bit of a frustration factor for things like the Shenyang F5, which in this case here, I'm dogfighting, energy dogfighting, but this guy has no energy, and he is one versus many, so I have basically free reign on this guy because I have teammates around. But the average Andy who doesn't really know that isn't going to be able to exploit this plane to its highest potential. And so, who should we balance this plane by? Should we balance it off the average Andy? Because, you know, in that case we would get sort of the feel of what the average player can do, and therefore people at the bottom would have a chance and people at the top would also have a chance, right? That sounds pretty reasonable. But at the same time, you have a situation where you've got people that are extremely experienced and can exploit an aircraft. So, for example, me and the English Electric Lightning. I'm a, I'm a fairly decent player, if I, if I do say so myself. But the average player cannot exploit the English Electric Lightning. So what did I decide to do one day? I got really upset. I was having a really, really bad day. And f uh, for those of you that follow me on Twitter, you'll know that February hasn't been kind to me. So I decided to take out the English Electric Lightning. And for the first time in a very long time playing War Thunder, I decided to be a toxic asshole and just fly in a straight line the whole time. I don't do that very often, but I tell you what, no one was able to catch me because the Lightning is the fastest plane at that battle rating. And it is fastest by a fair margin, even with the MiG-19s sitting at that battle rating. The only thing that was able to pose a threat was the MiG-19S and all I had to do was stay in a straight line. If I wanted to genuinely get some kills, then I possibly could have if my team hadn't done a Harold Holt on me and disappeared into the water. But in this case, I didn't, and I ended up just giving up and letting someone take the kill in the end. But this highlights the sort of issue that I have with certain vehicles being balanced by the average. Sure, it means that the average player isn't going to be nearly as good as they otherwise would be, but at the same time, it's going to stop the top level of players from abusing it. And for me, that's a positive thing. War Thunder is a frustrating game. It is a very tough game to get into. And one of the things that could be done to reduce the frustration factor is reduce the amount of abusable planes in the game. And I think if a plane is abusable, then Gaijin have uh, failed to balance the plane correctly. So in the case of something like the R3T20, I think that is a prime example of a plane that should be going down in battle rating. I think something like the Jumbos, when they were at 4.3, I think it was, they were abusable and they were pretty poorly balanced. So people who knew what they were doing could get lots of kills, and people who didn't know what they were doing were not going to get kills anyway. So if you're going to increase that battle rating, you're going to see the better players have a tougher time getting kills, and the average Andes who get no kills anyway, they're going to get no kills anyway. So you're not really losing anything here. Not only that, I have had some interesting conversations with some people regarding balancing by the average, and one of the things that is constantly brought up is that you'll lose those lower players to disinterest or to uh, their inability to sort of keep up. And whilst that's kind of true, War Thunder in a way compensates for that with a matchmaker that is based on a grind. And the more experience you have, the further up the grind you will be on average. Now, 
there are plenty of people out there who have bought every single premium underneath the, or under the sun, and I, I get that. You can't really escape that, but for the player that is absolute buttfuck average, they're going to get one or two kills and die anyway, and in War Thunder Air Combat, it is not that hard to get a single kill. It really isn't. All you have to do is, is like, Patrick Star, Lee to Little Lee style your plane after someone, spray, and you'll get a kill. Because everyone turn fights anyway at this, at this tier. And it kind of shows that a lot of people are a little bit too ambitious and a little bit too tunnel visioned on their, on their prey as such. And so I don't really think it's going to be affecting things. Just because of the way War Thunder plays out as a game, particularly War Thunder Jets. War Thunder Jets is also a little bit different because it is a lot harder to play than props. Oftentimes a lot of people will say stop guys should just flat out stop using statistics. And in a way, I kind of agree. I think props are mostly well balanced. In most cases, I think in in across the board, War Thunder uses the statistics to balance their propeller-driven aircraft fairly well. Things like the JU-88 or 288-2C. Uh, what am I saying? The JU-288C. This thing is an absolute pain in the ass, and now it sits at 6.0 because the statistics demand that. And I think that this has worked quite well. Other aircraft going down. Uh, in, in prop tier, I genuinely can't think of a prop that has been poorly balanced at the moment. Someone let me know in the comments section below because they're going to know a little bit better, especially if you play props. Uh, I don't play that many props anymore, but I, I really should get back into it. Regardless, I think that there is still some merit, maybe like the CW21. Uh, there are a couple of outstanding planes that are fairly popular and a lot of people do really well in them. And the CW21 is a classic example here. This particular plane and the Heinkel uh, 100D. Now I think the Heinkel 100D has received its fair share of up tiers, um, but the CW221 is still very, very strong, and yet the statistics don't seem to, to share that opinion. Yet, when you play the plane, it literally outturns everything, it literally outclimbs everything, and it doesn't matter that it doesn't outgun everything because everything else at that tier is going to have a hard time getting on your six. Planes play a fairly different way to jets, however, where you've got a lot of people with a fair amount of experience versus people with a little bit less experience. And in this case, I think the statistics need to take a back seat in, the, in this case, and um, a couple of different things need to happen. First of all, jets are fairly compressed. A lot of the time, you might be seeing planes do poorly because they're in the wrong matchmaker for their aircraft class. And you might think, well, you know, attacker, bomber, you know, it seems kind of well balanced there, but in the case that I'm talking about, I'm specifically referring to things like subsonics, supersonic generation 1, Mach 2 generation 1, you know, things like the F-100, things like the F-11. The F-11, as you can see, is not a particularly good aircraft for fighting against transonics. And when I say transonics, I mean other 9-0s. This plane would be much better suited to fighting things like the Shenyang F5, the F100s, other things like that, where it is a little bit better at dealing with these aircraft. Something like the F11 is designed to go very fast, and it's designed for higher speed combat, things like 800 plus. Whereas the F2 Saber, for example, which is a uh, quintessential 9.0, or the MiG 9, uh, 17, which is another quintessential 9.0, is a lot more suited for the slower 600 to 400 kilometer per hour type combat where there is a lot more dogfighting and there's a lot more working down of your opponent. Whereas the F-11 is more designed for combat or at least plays out more in a way that is akin to interceptor type combat where the goal is to go really fast to use those missiles and to use the guns on slow enemies. I think in, in my personal opinion this is the right way to be balancing your aircraft. In a case like the F-11, it is a little bit too low, but that makes its statistics right in Gaijin's eyes. However, it doesn't balance the plane out and reduce its frustration factor. And for me, if a plane has a high frustration factor like the MiG-19, the English Electric Lightning, and the F-11 F-1, I think these planes have been balanced incorrectly. So, when a plane is sitting at a battle rating that it is not suited for, for example, the G91YS at uh, 10.0, it does 
fairly poorly. But how, however, when it is fighting planes in a full down tier, the plane does exceedingly well because it is more akin or it is more appropriate to combat at that level, meaning subsonics and transonics. The plane itself might not be particularly strong against things like Mark IIs, and overall, if you see that in a match, it may give the appearance of balanced statistics. However, the plane still has a high frustration factor, because when you play against the subsonics, you don't really see many of them because your battle rating is too high, and when you don't, you're basically getting railed by five big burly black men like Piper Perry. So, in the case of things like a plane that is out of its competition, you need to basically take it and move it with its competition. Does that, does that make sort of sense to you? If it does, let me know in the comments section below. I think in this case, it, you need to play Jets to really understand how the whole thing plays out. And I think I've got the nail on the head here. You see, the F-11, like I said in the first video that I made on this plane when it first came out, I believe that it is more suitable for combat that is a little bit more fast-paced. Things like the 8.7s, the gun jets, the old-style Korean War jets, these are more suited to working down your opponent. Something like a MiG-15. You have to slowly lower your opponent's energy, and then when they get to that low energy state, that's when you use your guns, and that's when you strike. And there is a really high level of skill required to play that. When you get to a higher tier, the skill doesn't become using your guns appropriately. It becomes more positional. It becomes more, can you pick up an enemy at the right time? Can you keep your speed? Can you work yourself into a position that is ad advantageous for your aircraft? And these are jets like the... English Electric Lightning, the F-104, the Su-7. These types of jets really rely on positional knowledge and positional expertise in order to actually perform. And this is why I've constantly recommended for a bit more decompression, because at the moment you have things like the F-11, you have things like the G-91YS facing things that are too low for them yet too high for their compatriots. For me, if you put something like the F-11 at 9.3, put that with the F-3H Demon, or screw it, through the Demon to 9.7, and then worked your way up slowly with that, you could have a fairly decent matchmaker, say F-11 and F-3 Demon at 9.7, uh, along with things like the, I don't know, Shenyang F-5, um, and other types of jets that perform similar, and require a bit more of a fast-paced gameplay. Then, at a slightly higher tier, you have things like the MiG-21F, the MiG-19, the things that require a bit more, a bit more, I guess, patience. Things that require, or things that have less ammo, but have excellent performance. And these types of jets are the ones that are your, I guess, your early interceptors. These ones, if you make a mistake, then you are going to suffer for it, but you will only going to suffer for it if you have an enemy nearby. These things, in my opinion, are a little bit better to balance the, the game overall, because you don't have that, uh, that sort of meshing of different types or different styles of vehicle, and that is where you get the frustration factor. When a plane like the F-11 fights a plane like the J-29. In my opinion, that that is just terrible. Because the plane, the J-29 is about as fast as a MiG-15 BIS. And being 0.3 from this plane means that it will often see it, and it will often be able to do very little about it. Yet, the thing is, if you kept it this way, or if you decided to expand the battle ratings a little bit, you're not going to eliminate that problem, obviously. The plane is still going to be a little bit further away, but it is going to be fighting planes and have planes on its team due to quantitative matchmaker that have very similar characteristics. So the J-29 might have the J-32B Lancer on its side, and so we'll be able to at least fight in a team that is not completely outmatched with its compatriots. Maybe it's going to have the MiG-21F 
on its team, which can do a lot of things. But the F, uh, 11F is going to also have F100s or F104s on its team. And so it's able to work with its team a little bit better and work in the environment a little bit better in order to come about something that is workable. For me, this is where statistics fail. Because of the, the matchmaker being both compressed and the skill level being both high and different to what we have at uh, props, for example, I think we get a little bit of a discrepancy in the statistics, and I think the statistics fall behind. Not only that, but by sort of balancing these guys by something soft, like, uh, like their performance, or by balancing them by something that is you know, not the average player, it reduces the frustration factor of these planes. And the average Andy is still going to get zero kills with it and still going to play three games and give up. The people that are going to be playing this plane for months and months on end are the people that know what they're doing. I'm a, I'm a classic example with the Lightning. I've played so much of the Lightning and I wouldn't play the Lightning if it was... I don't know. If it wasn't that particularly... Uh, I don't know. It's just the, the way that the Lightning is. I, I personally like it. Uh, and I'm able to exploit it. But that's just me. And that's always just going to be me. That's not going to change. The F11, I can guarantee you there are going to be people that play the F11, play it properly, or at least try to do as well as they possibly can in the F11. And yet, they're still not going to be getting many kills. Me, on the other hand, I play this plane properly. I want to get kills. I want to get footage to show you guys. Uh, and I end up with a 4 to 1 kill death ratio. And that's just... That's just the way it goes. In a case like this, would it be better to balance by the average Andy? Is the average Andy even putting in the same amount of effort as I am? I'm a bit of sweat when it comes to War Thunder. I really like to try my hardest, and I like to try and squeeze the most out of an aircraft. Who's going to be the best at squeezing the most out of an aircraft? Someone who doesn't give a shit? Well, I don't think that we should be taking the statistics of someone who doesn't even try. And so, who do you balance it off? If someone's not going to give a shit, and if someone's just going to play for fun and not really care, how their performance is in matches, then should their statistics be even taken with any seriousness whatsoever? I am starting to think not. And I think that there's a valid reason to think not. Because if someone is going to play this game and going to influence the way that the game is played by other players, then they should be the ones that are taking the game the most seriously. If you are trying and you're crap at the game, well, that's 100% fine. Give it a go at getting better, but if you genuinely don't give a shit, I I don't see eye to eye with you, unfortunately. I understand that some people just want to have a little bit of fun and enjoy the game. I get that. But at the same time, if these particular people are out influencing the outcome of the game for everyone else who is putting in a lot of effort to maybe get a little bit better or try and improve themselves, then should their, should their statistics be taken nearly as seriously? I'm personally leaning towards no, and I genuinely think that if someone is going to not put effort in, then that should reflect in the balancing decisions that Gaijin makes. I think at this particular point in Jets, especially with it being very difficult, there's not... it is very difficult to balance these things, because there are a lot of factors that come into play. But I think using statistics in Jets, at least at this particular tier, is a little bit of a lost cause for a couple of very good reasons. One of those reasons being the, the difficulty of Jets. Another one kind of being the stock grind, but I'm, I'm sure the statistics take the stock grind into account. I think overall, the average Andy is still going to be an average Andy and get zero kills. I think there is no saying that in any other way and I genuinely think I'm correct here. If anyone would like to have a discussion with that, let me know in the comments section below and we can have a chat about it in the comments. But for now, thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I really appreciate your support. Feed the algorithm with a like and a comment. I would really love you for that. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gents. Take care. And I'll catch you next time.